But it's interesting, you know, you look at uh, BST in that era, of course, the second record exploded. Did you, uh, yeah. And I'm sure you've been asked this a million times, a million and one now. Did you ever think that record would be as big as it did uh, when you were recording that record? Uh, well, a lot of things happened very quickly uh, yeah. that, that, you know, kind of proved us, proved us right in what okay. we did with that album you made me so very happy immediately going to number one right. uh, on the singles charts, uh, getting tons of airplay and us doing the, the Ed Sullivan show. Sure. Uh, that was, that was the pinnacle. Man, you know, you did, back in those days, you did, you did that show and, and you were in, you could work anywhere after that. Uh, and that all happened within, uh, within about a month of that album coming out uh so yeah we had we had a pretty good idea that 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 it was gonna it was gonna make some noise and it did if you think about the timing uh you you know when you think about it back then so many different styles of music were in the billboard or cash box 100 mm -hmm. uh so you you could have a hard rock record and a bs and t record and even a chicago record all and, and Frank, and of course, right. Frank would, would be there today. Yeah. I don't think that's you know a real possibility. Everything's so compartmentalized. So right. oh, this record will do well on this chart, and this one will do well on the other. Back then, it was just a lot freer, a lot more open, more democratic. Yep. Yeah, yeah. New, I mean, new sounding stuff was coming out every day back then. It was like um, uh, you know the. the the uh the the record charts uh were just moving so quickly you know every every week there'd be four five six new singles on the charts yeah. and uh, you know uh, we had uh, pretty good staying power with that with that second album i think we were in the the top 10 for nearly a year yeah well, uh, with the second album um and that was that was unusual, and uh, uh, you know, really, really made us feel like like we'd uh, come up with the right thing. Well, it's interesting also because you had the you still had the writer and the uh, uh, the performer because obviously you guys did Holland Dozier Holland, you did Carol King, uh, right. Tim Buckley tune, Laura Nero. Steve right. Winwood, Billy Holiday, you guys, and and Three Dog Night the same way, mm -hmm. you know. So mm -hmm. it's almost like your records and their records were almost like greatest hits records because you yes. had all the best songwriters, Paul Williams, yep. uh, Elton, yep. and Bernie, and 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 things like uh, that. And we don't. That's I think something that's also lost where you had interpretive artists, even though David wrote I think one or two of the hits there. Yeah. Um. You had like Joe Cocker was an interpretive artist. L Linda Ronstadt, Blood Sweat mm -hmm. and Tears. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, a different era, different, just a whole different concept. Right, right. And we we felt really good about uh, uh, some of those uh, songwriters' careers that we we helped uh, catapult. I mean, right. uh, gosh, I mean, James Taylor was really just kind of getting started right, back yeah. in those days, and we uh, you know did uh, Fire and Rain and. Uh, now all of a sudden, you know, he uh, had the uh, had the world in the palm of his hand. Yeah, uh, and did uh, did that for a lot a lot of those songwriters back then, and we really felt good about that. Yeah, uh, and, and did you have a, any uh, uh, decision making in the process of of picking those songs? Because I would imagine if I'm a songwriter, I want my song on a BS and D record. <laughs> oh yeah, we we every every week there'd be a a, a box full of demos, you know, <laughs> acetate demos, show up at our office. And so we yeah. had a lot to lot to listen to, 
But okay. yeah, it was it was a uh, democratic process. Um, right. You know, we didn't pick a song unless everyone in the band uh, felt good about it. Um, and uh, then uh, we'd uh, uh, decide who would who would do the the, the horn charts. Uh, Freddie Lipsius uh, right. did a lot, and Freddie and Al Cooper worked together, and. Uh, uh, then uh, Dick Halligan came along, and uh, he, I mean, he could, he, he was such a well educated musician, and he could, he could write for anything, you know, mm-hmm. you want to want a symphony orchestra, no problem, you know, or, uh, you know, a, a big band horn section, he, he knew how to handle all of it. So, uh, well, also, uh, but if I recall, wasn't there a Maxwell House commercial with your version of the Gymnopodies? Uh, I think you are right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, I see Maxwell House, Rain, and the Gymnopodies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, that's that's the kind of times it was. You, know, you yeah. just, boy, the music was showing up everywhere. It really was an amazing year when you talk about, you think about 1971, I always think of that as being such a, uh, a, a a watermark you had. I was working at the Record Hunter, I was like 16 at the time, right by Carnegie Hall. Yeah. And in in one box, over the week, you had What's Going On, Tapestry, First Weather Report, uh, the third Rod Stewart album with Maggie mm-hmm. May, Mud right. Slide Slim. Uh huh. You think about that all within the same time period. It was just everything right. was up for right. grabs. It was a wonderful right. time in music. Yeah, and it was all getting airplay. Yeah, yeah. that's. Uh, I think that that's one thing you wouldn't see anymore. You know? Yeah, exactly. Well, there is no real airplay anymore. You got a bunch right. of bean counters looking at things and uh yeah. algorithms see, we have algorithms <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, now we we spoke to uh, leo Lyons of 10 years after and he um told us about this gig up in uh, upstate new york called woodstock and he said gosh mm-hmm. they were touring so much that that really was just another gig on the schedule uh, yeah. was that the case for uh, bs and t when you were absolutely absolutely yeah. Uh, we, we, of course, played Sunday night, the, you know, the closing show. Uh, so it, uh, by the time we got to the hotel, it was already dark and they uh, um, shut down the helicopter service mm-hmm. when it got dark. So they had to drive us in. I think, you know, the hotel was maybe three or four miles from the uh, uh from the concert area and it, it took us like an hour and a half to make that drive and then w- which was fine because we got there and everything was running like two or three hours behind schedule um so uh, and and um uh crosby stills and nash were going to come on right after us so they were there and we all hung out in the tent uh backstage together and got stupid and <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, you know, it was time for us to go on. We went on, did our set, came off, back in the back in the car, and back to the hotel. So I didn't, I didn't get to see a lot of, uh, got to see a bit of Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Um, their first show, I believe, right? Uh, I think it was, yeah. Yes, it was their first show, absolutely. Uh, and they already had Neil Young okay. <laughs> coming on uh, with them. Um, but that's that's about all I saw of, of any uh, any part of the actual concert, and um, uh, by that by that time the you know the all the weather problems uh, that had come down on them uh, over the weekend had, had driven away uh, a lot of the folks who were there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think uh, my estimation, of course, it's hard because it was in the dark, but my estimation is that the crowd was down to somewhere around 50,000 by the time we got on. Uh, the, the, the diehards who, who they were going to see Jimi Hendrix and they didn't, <laughs> didn't care what it took. Yeah, <laughs> and of course, yeah. when Jimmy finally did get on, the sun was coming up. And, uh, um, 
but uh, yeah, so I would I wish we would have had the opportunity a to be able to go out and mingle with the crowd a bit, uh, and b to hear you know uh, some more of the music that went on. But uh, so for us, it just pretty much turned out to be another gig. Any any idea at that point that that would be sort of a touchstone in uh, pop culture at that point? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah so? that was, yeah, it was it was all pretty obvious. Uh, just the fact that it, that it had drawn so many people right. uh, to see it, it's, uh, you couldn't couldn't help but think, boy, there, there's something going on here. 